Reinforcement learning is about taking actions in a simulation environment and learning from those experiences. In part one, we talked about structuring inefficient passenger boarding as a reinforcement learning problem. Now we need to create the simulation environment so that we can apply an algorithm like PPO to solve the problem. I'm going to assume that you are pretty decent with Python, so I will focus mainly on the reinforcement learning pieces. Gymnasium or Jim, originally built by OpenAI, was probably one of the first, if not the first set of reinforcement learning environments. It pretty much sets the standard interface for a reinforcement learning environment. When we build our environment, we will be adhering to Jim's uh, standards. I'm going to open a Anaconda prompt. And I'll create a new Conda environment to hold all the uh, libraries for this exercise. Conda create dash n for new for uh, the name. And I'll just call it airplane EMV. And I will install Python 3.12 on it. Okay, environment created. Let me activate it. Now I'm going to install Gymnasium. Okay, Gymnasium is installed. Let me go to my Visual Studio code. And down here, I'm gonna make sure I select the interpreter as the environment that I just created, a uh, plain uh, underscore env. We have to create a new class to encapsulate the simulation environment. I'm calling mine airplane env. We have to inherit the uh, gym.env class and gym is imported up here. When we inherit the gym.env class, we have to implement a few functions. Let me hold control and I'll click on env. The functions that we must implement are uh, reset. Uh, reset resets the environment to an internal state. So after every episode, we need to call reset to reset the simulation and start over. The next function that needs to be implemented is the step function. The step function basically executes the action. Going back to our diagram, this is our simulation environment and the step function takes in the action and it must return a reward and observation. We can see that the input is an action and the output is an observation and a reward. There's a few more things that it returns. Terminate it when the simulation has reached a terminal state for uh, the passenger onboarding. When everybody has sat inside the plane, the episode has terminated. Truncated is not used in this environment. This is uh, useful for something like the mountain car environment where you're trying to train the car to get to the flag. It's possible that the car gets stuck down here forever. So you need to set a limit to how many actions it can take before you truncate or cut off the episode and start over. And finally, info is just a dictionary of additional information that you can return so that during training, you can use this to maybe figure out what's happening with the training. And I have those three functions. Oh, there is one more. The render function, if there is a graphical interface, this is done in the render function. Uh, or you can use it to just spit out print statements. So we have these three functions here that we need to complete. These metadata is also something expected by the um, class that we're inheriting. Let me go back here. You can see that it's expecting metadata. And this is just used to uh, define the render mode and how fast to render the uh, graphics. In the init function, we call the reset to reset the environment. And there are two things expected to be defined, the action space and the observation space. Now, once we have this skeleton, we can use the register function the register function comes from importing from here. We use the register function to register 
our class with Jim. Once we register the class with Jim, we can use the standard interfaces like Jim.make to create the environment and then run simulations. The register function takes in an ID. This is the usual Jim naming convention, the name of the environment plus a version. And then the entry point points to module name, class name. Module name is airplane boarding. That's what I named my Python file, colon, and then the name of the class, which is airplane env. To validate that we created the class correctly, Jim comes with a built-in checker or environment checker. So this function here, um, calling jim.make, passing in the ID that was defined or registered up top. And uh, I'm not rendering anything at the moment. So this line creates the environment and then I'll pass the environment into the check env function. And this will check whether my environment is accurate or not. Jim is built in a way where you can enhance your environment with wrappers. What I mean is at the gymnasium page, uh, if you scroll down to wrappers, list of wrappers, for example, you can add time limit to your environment by using this time limit uh, wrapper that's already provided to you by Jim. If we want to, so if we want to just check our environment, we want to call the unwrap attribute. It returns the base environment, which is our environment. And this is what we're passing to the check environment function. Actually, let me rename this just so we don't get confused by the same names. Okay, this is my check environment and this one is calling the built-in environment checker. Okay, down here on my main, I'll just call my environment check and we'll see what happens. Continue running. Okay, we can see at the bottom, we can see the error. The environment must specify an action space. So it knows that we have not defined our action space. Okay, so as we flush out some of these functions and attributes, we can use the uh, environment checker to see if we're doing it correctly. Okay, that is it for now. Join me in the next video and we'll continue working on our simulation environment.